Hello. In this video, we're continuing with our corporate liquidation discussion, looking at the corporate tax consequences. This is corporate liquidation problem three. So Ugly Fruit Corp, a C corporation, was formed many years ago by Orange Inc. and Grapefruit Corp to combine their business ideas. Orange Inc. owns 80 shares out of the 100 outstanding common um, stock shares. The other 20 shares are owned by Grapefruit. Orange's adjusted basis in the stock is $8 million. Grapefruit's adjusted basis in the stock is $2 million. Ugly Fruit liquidates and distributes the following items. Now, there's going to be two variations. All of this information stays the same. The only thing that's going to change is the information regarding um, what's being distributed to Orange and Grapefruit. So this is variation one. We'll do variation two after this. Again, only two variations. So everything above what's given to Orange and Grapefruit will be, stay the same. So Orange is going to receive a fruit packaging factory from Ugly Fruit with a fair market value of $20 million, adjusted basis of $9 million. Grapefruit's going to receive 100 shares of Tangerine Corp, separate corporation, fair market value $5 million, adjusted basis $4 million. Okay, so remember, whenever we have a corporate tax issue, the first thing is identify which hat to wear to analyze the question. So here we're told that Ugly Fruit's going to liquidate and distribute. So we know that we have a section 346 liquidation. The next question is, is it going to be the general rules under section 331 and 336 for complete liquidations or the special subsidiary liquidation rule that applies? So the way that we analyze is the general rule is going to apply unless the uh, special rule applies. So here, if you look at what's going on, we've got two shareholders. They're the only shareholders. Let's say there's only one type of stock, outstanding common stock. Okay, outstanding that we have here in this problem, only one class of stock. So we have two corporations, Orange and Grapefruit. Orange owns 80% of Ugly Fruit Corporation. Grapefruit owns 20% of Ugly Fruit Corporation. So because one of the shareholders is a corporation that owns 80% or more, looking at voting in all classes of stock, which here is only one class of stock, that means that this applies, the special um, checklist apply for the special non-recognition rule. And what's going to happen is this right here, this part of the transaction, no gain or loss is going to be recognized to orange or ugly fruit. But this part of the transaction, grapefruit to ugly fruit, that part will be subject to some special rules. Okay, so we have to address the consequences to to Orange, Grapefruit, and Ugly Fruit Corporation. So the easiest one to address is Orange. Orange has no gain or loss. So Orange has no gain or loss under Section 332. No gain or loss. Recognize. Orange takes a basis in the property received, which here is the factory... It carries over under Section 337 as the $9 million carryover basis. Also, another thing not addressed in this problem, but important, is that any earnings and profits or NOLs, 80% of that will carry over to Orange from Ugly Fruit. Because remember, Ugly Fruit is liquidating, so ceasing operations. So that's important as well. Tax attributes, 80% will carry over. Will carry over. Also, tacking. Tacking on the factory will carry over to Orange. So we've just addressed all issues related to Orange. Okay, so next I like to do the minority shareholder. Let's do Grapefruit. So Grapefruit, any gain or loss that Grapefruit has is going to be subject to tax. So we do the normal amount realized in adjusted basis under the general rule under Section 331 and 336. Amount realized is what Grapefruit's getting. Grapefruit's getting the value of the stock, the Tangerine Corporation stock. There's no liability relief to worry about or anything like that. So that's going to be the $5 million value of the stock minus the adjusted basis in the stock that Grapefruit has in orange, which is $2 million. So Grapefruit, we subtract away the $2 million basis in Orange Corporation, the stock in Orange Corporation. That's a $3 million gain. Let's say that Grapefruit has held the stock for more than a year. That's going to be a $3 million long-term capital gain. Okay, we got that. 
the adjusted basis that Grapefruit takes in the stock, in the Tangerine Corporation stock, that's going to equal fair market value under Section 334. So that's going to equal $5 million. $5 million. Okay, we've got one last thing to do. We have to determine the consequences to Ugly Fruit, Ugly Fruit Corp. Again, the idea is that the transaction between Orange and Ugly Fruit, no gain or loss recognized to either party, but from Grapefruit to Ugly Fruit, whatever's transferred there, yes. So that means that the fruit packaging, um, the fruit, sorry, fruit packing factory, there's no gain or loss with respect to that transaction, but with respect to the Tangerine Corp that's transferred, yes, yes. So the amount realized minus the adjusted basis. Basically what happens here is that with respect to the fruit packing, section 332 and 337 apply because that's what's transferred to Orange, but the 100 shares of Tangerine Corporation, section 331 and 336 apply to Ugly because that's transferred to Grapefruit, and remember that qualifies. So we're doing the amount realized. That's going to be the fair market value, the greater fair market value or any liabilities that Grapefruit, Grapefruit takes on, which there's no liabilities here. So the greater of the two is going to be the $5 million minus the adjusted basis of the Tangerine Corp stock, which is $4 million. That's going to be a $1 million gain to Ugly Fruit Corporation. The character of that gain is however, whatever the asset is, let's say that um, Ugly Fruit has held the Tangerine Corporation stock for more than a year. And because Ugly Fruit is not a dealer or broker in securities, this is going to be a long-term capital gain to Ugly Fruit. And we've just analyzed the tax consequences and variation one to all parties, orange, grapefruit, and Ugly Fruit. All right, so now we have variation two. And remember variation two, the only thing that changes is the last two lines. What's being um, distributed to orange, what's being distributed to grapefruit. So everything else stays the same. So again, if we're going through this from the beginning, we have a liquidation, boom, complete liquidation, section 346. The next step to, to a, a deal with is whether it's the general rule 331, 336, or the special rule, remember, of the special subsidiary, um, section 332, 337. So remember, we have two shareholders that own ugly fruit. We've got orange and grapefruit. Orange owns 80%, Grapefruit owns 20%, and that's Ugly Fruit, right? So this qualifies for the special 332, 337, at least this part does, because Orange is a corporation owning 80% or more of the, of the subsidiary. Okay, so I'm sorry, my apologies. This qualifies for non-recognition, so that's why I have the X, but this portion right here, that's going to be the normal 331, 336. So all gain and losses have to be recognized. So we start with the consequences of orange. And just like we saw in variation one, I always start with orange. No gain or loss recognized. So no gain or loss recognized. The adjusted basis in the property received is going to be a rollover basis. So orange receives a factory. So the adjusted basis that orange takes is 30 million. Just a straight rollover basis. Get to tack on however long it's held. And then all tax attributes roll over at 80% because it's 80% ownership. And they roll over to orange. Okay, they roll over to orange. So any NOLs, any um, EMP, all that stuff would roll over. So next thing I like to do is look at grapefruit. Grapefruit is a minority shareholder. We're going to have the amount realized minus the adjusted basis. Okay, amount realized minus adjusted basis. So here, the amount realized is what, is what Grapefruit's getting. Grapefruit is getting stock, Tangerine Corporation stock, with a value of $5 million. There's no liability relief or anything to worry about that. So we take $5 million, we subtract away the million, I'm sorry, the $2 million that Grapefruit has in the... Um, in Ugly Fruit Corporation stock, $2 million. Again, no liability relief to worry about or anything like that. We have a $3 million gain. Assuming the stock, assuming the Ugly Fruit Corporation stock has been held for more than a year, this will be long-term capital gain. The adjusted basis in the Tangerine stock that Ugly, I'm sorry, that Grapefruit takes is equal to fair market value. And the fair market value of that is equal to $5 million. 
$5 million. Okay, $5 million. And that's under Section 334. So regardless, well, if there's liabilities here or anything, it's always going to be equal to the fair market value. Okay, so now we're looking at the consequences of ugly fruit. Okay, ugly fruit. So again, the best way to do this is look at this diagram. We have two really things going on. We've got 332, 337 applying to the contrib by applying to the distribution for ugly fruit to orange. That's the fruit packaging or fruit packing. I keep saying fruit packaging. Fruit packing, that, that's going to be um, no gain or loss with respect to that transaction to ugly fruit, no gain or loss. But the transaction, the distribution for ugly fruit to grapefruit of the 100 shares of stock that's going to have consequences. So we've got amount realized minus adjusted basis. So the amount realized is going to be the fair market value of the property, the greater fair market value of the property or liability relief, no liability relief here. So it's just going to be the fair market value, which is $5 million. The adjusted basis is the adjusted basis of the property given up, which is $6 million. We've got a $1 million loss. So there's a special rule here, an anti-abuse rule, and it's, it's to stop shareholders from transferring the minority shareholder, the loss, and that way you recognize the loss. And then, you know, the parent have to not recognize the gain when you have, to, when you have the ability to pick and choose property, right? If, if the, let's say the, um, the fruit packing, uh, had a gain in it and the shares of stock had a loss. Well, because orange is, has the non-recognition, the, um, shareholders would want to, I'm sorry, the parent and the subsidiary would want to, um, pick just like they're picking fruit, right? Um, they don't want to pick hand pick. Okay. Well, orange is going to get the gain property to defer gain, but then the loss property will go to the, will go to the minority shareholder. So we recognize the loss. So Congress comes in and says, uh, uh, can't take the loss, no loss allowed. So that means there's going to be zero gain or loss here. It's all going to be disallowed, disallowed here under the rules, under the special, um, subsidiary rules. When you have the minority shareholder, there's a loss. No loss can be taken by the, um, by the subsidiary corporation to the minority shareholder. So the rule is only gain, but never loss. So only loss, I'm sorry, only gain can be taken, never loss. So we've just addressed the consequences to orange, grapefruit, and ugly corporation. When you look at both variation one and variation two, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please take a look at the other corporate tax videos out there because understanding the big picture really does help things. So I hope you've enjoyed this video.